I love the pigment on these. Definitely feel the plumping effects. You can get good pigmentation. Let's do a before and after of my lips. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, then welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. And today we are going to be swatching all of the new NYX Duck Plump lip glosses. These are brand new plumping lip glosses. I've gotten a lot of requests on swatching these and I finally got my hands on them. I myself am also curious about these i'm a little nervous because my baseline on plumping lip glosses as of right now this market is going to be the maybelline ones and if you guys watched that maybelline lifter gloss plumping lip gloss video i was struggling through that those were hot i'm a little nervous i heard somewhere that they're not as intense but i still assume that they're gonna be a little bit spicy okay as always i'm gonna read out the specs for you guys guys if you're curious if you just want to see like the highlighted notes on these first it says it's a plumping gloss with spicy ginger in 17 shades but i believe it's 18 because there's also a clear one i did not purchase the clear one and there was only one shade that was missing i purchased mine on ulta they were 13 dollars, and only one shade was out of stock but i do have all the other shades here behind me it says it's extremely plumping extreme sensation <laughs> Oh man, I'm scared. Instant and overtime plumping for the ultimate injectionless pout with duck plump extreme sensation plumping gloss. It's powered by spicy ginger, maximum intense color with minimum effort. And they also give you some lip liner combinations as well. I think that's pretty cool. I actually really like that. We're not gonna be combining any of these with lip liner. We're literally just gonna be swatching them as is. So let's get into it. I do have them in numerical order behind me. So we're just gonna go in that order. Let's get a little close-up of what my lips look like right now and then we'll compare it to what my lips look like at the very end so we can see if it truly has any sort of immediate plumping effects. I think at the end of the month, I think on the 23rd or 24th, they will be available in stores, but I ordered mine as soon as they hit the website. We're going in with number two. I believe number one is going to be the clear one, so ours is going to start at two. And this is the shade Bang & Bear. Bang & Bear is described as a neutral nude. No obvious scent from what I can tell. I'm stalling. I'm scared. Okay. Very high pigment. I feel like that covered up my actual lip color pretty consistently. There is a little bit of streaking right here. I don't really want to press my lips together too much because I feel like you guys don't typically like when I do that so I'm trying really hard not to. Immediately I already feel the tingling sensation to these and I kind of feel it on the tip of my tongue which you guys know I don't like feeling plumper on my tongue let alone like in my mouth but I definitely do feel it a little bit right now. This is something that I would use to top a lipstick or a lip liner or something. I wouldn't personally wear this alone. It's not really the type of color that I would go for. This so far, not my favorite, but I didn't think it would be. I mean, it's the lightest one of the bunch and typically those are too light for my liking. I have had it on maybe for a minute now and I definitely feel it on the outer portions of my lips more than like in the center. Definitely more on the top lip here, but before I let it fully set in, because we have so many to go through. I'm just going to go ahead, take this off and then put the next one on so we can talk more about the plumping at the very end. Next, we have the shade number three, Nude Swings. This one is described as a warm nude. This applicator is quite interesting to me. It almost like, I guess in theme, seems more like a duck bill where it's a little bit more pointed and tapered on the end and it's flatter on both sides. So it makes it pretty easy to apply it. Here is number three, Nude Swings. I actually don't hate this one. This one almost seems like my natural lips right now, but a little bit darker and more even in tone. I feel like I could get away with this one and feel fine with it, but typically when I use a glossy shade, I want it a little bit more dark than this one. Next is number four, Apricot. This one is described as a muted peach. This one definitely seems like something I would use to top a lip color if I wanted to go more nude, but I think I like this one because it does have a tint of brown in it versus like beige. I'm going to press my lips together and see what that pigment is like with like a thin layer. Oh, you see that gooping right there? Even with a thin layer, this has really good coverage but also this does have gooping so doing that little finger trick I think is going to be necessary to get that excess off of the center. I definitely taste this in my mouth. I'm being very careful but I taste it on the tip of my tongue and it's kind of like surrounding 
the like outside of my tongue now i don't like that okay sorry about that guys my audio for some reason cut off but i have it going now so hopefully you know it's not too bad number five we have brown of applause these are my tones you guys know i love a good pinky brown and this looks like the perfect pinky brown this is described as a mid-tone warm brown i love the pigment on these they are very very nice and pigmented so i wouldn't really feel a need to wear a lipstick underneath it so I like the fact that they have suggestions to pair it with just a lip liner because that's most likely the way that I would wear them. Mmm. Mmm. This is pretty. I'm gonna press my lips together now. It feels nice and creamy. They're slightly thicker. Well, I wouldn't even say thicker. I would say they just feel creamier, a little balmy, but not really like a liquid lip balm. Slightly ready pinky brown tones in them. Just everything I really, really like when it comes to a lip color. Oh, I got on my teeth. But this is five brown of applause. If I were any more pale than what I am currently, I feel like this would kind of pull a little bit orange. But as of right now, I think it still looks really nice. I feel like when I'm more tan, like in the summertime and stuff, I would really, really like this shade because it would just complement my tan overall. Number six, Brick of Time. This is described as a rich terracotta. I almost want to go in with an even thinner layer because I feel like I can get away with it with the darker shades. You can get good pigmentation even with a very thin amount. I wouldn't even say this is one layer. I would say this is like a half layer, but you can see it completely covered my lip color and it definitely looks like I'm wearing a full coverage lip color. Ooh, it's starting to burn like right up here. Definitely feel the plumping effects and I definitely see a little bit of redness right on my cupid's bow. I don't know if you guys can see that. Next we have number seven, Mocha Me Crazy. Mocha Me Crazy is described as an ash brown. Again, I'm gonna go in with like a half layer here. So I'm just holding it sideways and just just getting what's on there like the excess oh i like this color it's slightly cool like overall but it's not so much to where it looks gray on me i do like that that's a really pretty one and if i were to go for something a little bit more nude a little bit more neutral then i would most likely go for this one out of all the ones that we've tried so far next is number eight mauve out my way and this one is described as a true mauve also really pretty something that i was looking in the tube and i was kind of like mm, i think it's gonna be a little bit too cool pink but on my lips i think it's pretty i like it i think that this one is well suited if you have medium or tan skin and you kind of like something Ooh, that has spicy. a little bit of color but definitely isn't any sort of pop of color number nine strike a rose this is described as a dusty rose this one on me is definitely a little bit more purpley pink than I typically would go for just alone. The other shades that I was really vibing with I could probably wear by themselves but if I wanted to wear this I would probably pair it with a darker brown type of lip liner just to add a little bit of dimension here because I almost feel like this shade is kind of clashing with my skin tone. You guys let me know. This seems like a very universal type of like rosy shade though. Next we have number 10 Lilac on Lock and this is described as a pinky lilac. I did a very thin layer of this. I think you can kind of tell a little bit more how thin this is because you can see a little bit of my lip color peeking through, or honestly, it could just be the outline getting more irritated and a little bit more red. I think that the name and the description fits it perfectly. It is definitely a true lilac shade. Number 11 is Pick Me Pink. You can also definitely see that the texture is a little bit more thick, a little bit more creamy because it does hold its shape whenever you pull the doe foot out of the tube that's a thin layer but i feel like i need a little bit more to like fully cover my lips not my favorite i don't like pink shades on myself that's just always been a thing i've never really liked hot pink shades on myself um but if you do this is what it looks like Whew. <laughs> It's so spicy now. Next is number 12, Bubblegum Bay, which is described as a bubblegum pink. I'm just going in with everything that's on the doe foot because 
I guess with these lighter shades on me, I'm, I'm going to have to use all of it in order to get like full pigmentation for you guys. But again, you don't have to wear it full pigmentation. If you wanted to wear these sheer, you definitely could just add a little bit. Not really a shade that I typically go for, but I do think that it's a really beautiful bubblegum pink because it still seems kind of wearable. It seems to be a little bit more on the darker side of bubblegum pink shades, you know? Oh, spicy. I don't think it's necessary staining my lips I think that now it's just that formulation starting to really not irritate my lips but for lack of a better term irritate the lips because I mean that's essentially what lip plumpers are their lip irritants my lips are definitely more pigmented than they were at the beginning of the video and I'll insert like a side-by-side -side so you guys can see that uh, comparison. All right, next we have number 13, Peach Out. This is described as a vibrant peach and it definitely seems as such. So on my sort of irritated lips right now, it's pulling a little bit more reddish. I'll add more, but I will say I think it'll get really goopy if I go too close to the center. Yeah, this is probably the streakiest of the bunch, like the one that doesn't have as clear pigmentation, you can see right up here where I press my lips together, there's a lot of lines and it's very goopy right on the corners of my lips. So not crazy about this shade. Now I definitely think that this one is gonna be a little harder to work with. It, the goopiness is just driving me crazy, but I'm gonna leave it so you guys can see it in like real time, you know? I definitely had to go in with a thicker layer of this. As I said before, my lips are more irritated right now, so they are darker, but I think that this is a good representation if you do have darker natural lips than I do, and I feel like my lips are very very like faded now as I've gotten older I've lost a lot of natural color in my lips I don't want to talk about it <laughs> if you tend to have darker natural lips then this might be a better more realistic representation of what this shade would look like on you I'm like swallowing so much of this and I do not like that I got one of the cool lip line straws guys I really like it Okay, we only have four more to go. <clears throat> we can do this. <laughs> Next, we have number 14, Hall of Flame, which is a true red shade. Look at the tip of that. That's so funny. It kind of looks like a rooster or a chicken. Oh my gosh, that's so pigmented. All right, and let's add that to the lips. Ooh, pigment. Okay, here is Hall of Flame. I think that pigmentation was so nice. So you may want to line it though because it is a glossy lip color and if you don't want it to seep or fade or anything, maybe that would be a good idea. I'm not seeing any of that though. But again, I don't typically have issues with that. Next we have 15, twice the spice. And this is described as a spiced red. This looks brown to me, but maybe once it's swatched, it'll look different. When I think spiced red, I think something similar to a toned down brick red. When I do a thin layer, I can kind of see the red in it. Can you guys tell? So this is a really thin layer. Okay, here is twice the spice. Honestly, this looks like a brown to me. It looks like a brown on me. It may look different on other skin tones though, but for me, if I were to just look at it without looking at the description, I would say that this is a brown tone. Next, we have 16, Wine Knot, which is described as a rich reddish brown tone. This is kind of like the color I was thinking of for that last shade. Again, for this one, I'm going in with a semi thin layer, I would say. Just enough to cover the lips. I like this one. I actually really like the tone of this. Oh, I'm getting it on my teeth though. Let's put a little bit more on so you guys can see it with like more pigment, you know? Here it is with what I would consider a full pigmented layer, but it looks so goopy to me. I don't know. Lastly, thank goodness, <laughs> we have number 17, Pure Plump, which is described as a sangria purple. This one again seems like one that requires you to do a full layer because if not, it's gonna be streaky and uneven just because of the nature of the dark shade. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with a full layer of this. I don't like this one. I think that it's streaky. And if you continue to add pigment, it's never fully pigmented, you know? Like I feel like I'm still seeing my lip color and if you press your lips together, it does get those weird lines, you know? I'm not really a fan. It doesn't perform as well in my opinion. Okay, I don't know if it's <laughs> the residual like staining as I'm taking it off, but my lips look huge. You see this? Like, especially my Cupid's bow. <sighs> 
Oh, I put water on the paper towel and it feels so much better. <laughs> All right guys, here are my lips after swatching all those 16 shades. They're definitely, I think, a combination of stained and irritated. That last shade, I think it did kind of stain my lips. Before that, I didn't really think it was, even with the reds. Let's do a before and after of my lips. Let's see if they're comparable size-wise. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to tell, especially because my lip color is not the same as when it started. So keep that in mind. To me, when I'm just like sitting here with my mouth closed it does look a little bit more plump and I'm inclined to say that there is a little bit of residual plumping because the outlines of my lips definitely are a little bit more red a little bit more irritated all right so I did take some notes as I was like swatching them and stuff so I could let you guys know and kind of address what I think your questions are going to be for this product my first note was that they don't stain I think we can say the overwhelming majority of them do not stain as we saw as I was putting them on and taking them off there really wasn't any residual staining if anything just with those darker shades the purple maybe the reds started to stain it a little bit but aside from that I don't think that the purpose of these lip glosses are to stain the lips I think the purpose is to give you that high shine pigmentation then once you wipe it off you know it's gone essentially as far as comparison to their other lipstick formulations I just want to address each one for the most part all of these feel different from one another so I didn't think that the duck plumps would be any exception to that the smooth whips these are definitely more of a moussey lightweight whipped texture and they're definitely not as pigmented as you can see it's a very very thin lightweight type of lip product once you actually blend it out onto the lips they don't feel as moussey they feel very very lightweight i would say that these are most similar to the soft matte lip creams except i think that the smooth whips are more pigmented are more airy once you get them on the lips and you have them spread out they give the same effect and they kind of feel equally as thin on the lips the nyx lingerie xxls this is a little bit more liquid lip stick like this is nothing like these two this definitely seems more like a liquid lipstick and in the same sense as the duck plump ones these are highly pigmented but these do dry down completely matte and the butter gloss I would say have similar shine to them but I still think that the duck plumps are gonna be even more highly shiny and in terms of how they feel on the lips the butter gloss gloss is nowhere near as thick as the duck plumps are. This feels like a very, very thin, lightweight lip gloss. I did, however, pull out the Rare Beauty liquid balm, like the lip balm, because I kept thinking while I was swatching the next ones, I was like, this formulation seems similar. So I'm going to test that theory. Okay, even this feels thinner than the next ones. You can't even see the shade with how irritated my lips are right now. <laughs> I think that this one is a thicker, creamier formulation. We could kind of see that in terms of how goopy it was getting it definitely deposits a lot more color a lot more shine and just overall a lot more product onto the lips versus this one I was thinking that the slickness of the NYX duck plumps is similar to the rare beauty lip balms like the liquid lip balm I don't think the overall finish and the way that it wears on the lips are identical I would say that the closest thing that these remind me of are gonna be like glossy sticks. They are definitely more thick, more pigmented, you know, and ultra shiny. I like with the more neutral tones, like the warm, neutral brown tones we were able to kind of shear them out and build them up so they both looked really good and i like the fact that even though they were sheer you still got even coverage now it's hard to get those darker shades to be sheer in pigmentation and still have them even throughout i think it really only goes for those lighter or more mid-tone shades now the things i did not like about these right off the bat i didn't like that i was getting them in my mouth that's not typically an issue for me, but I did have that same issue with the Maybelline Lifter plumping glosses. I don't know if it's just 
these thicker plumping glosses in general, but before these two products, even with like Too Faced Lip Injection, Fenty, the Buxom, I never really got those in my mouth the way that I did with these. I don't know what it is about the formulation, but I did not like that sensation having the formula go in my mouth and like get on my tongue and stuff. And I really did not like how goopy these got. These were super, super, uber goopy. <laughs> I am inclined to say that they're gonna be a little bit more messy to wear throughout a long period of time. I definitely would not recommend wearing these while you're eating because one, you'll probably get that plumping sensation in your mouth, but also two, you might get it like all over your face, to be honest. This is definitely a gloss that I would recommend you use a mirror for because of one, how pigmented they are, and two, how goopy they can get. If you want something that's plumping, I think that this would be a good option for you. They're definitely more bearable than the Maybelline Lifter Plumping Gloss. I feel like those were on the verge of being very painful. They were like making my nose and my upper lip sweat, but these I did not break a sweat at all, but I could still feel the plumping sensation to them. I would say that the plumping of this is very similar to the Fenty Heat. I think that it gave me about the same amount of intensity. If anything, I think the NYX ones might be a little bit more intense, but then again, I use the Fenty Heat often so maybe i'm just used to that formulation at this point overall would i recommend these i think that i would if you plan on wearing these sheared out not if you want this specifically to be a super bold all day long lasting wear type of product i do think you're gonna have to reapply it because it's not meant to stain the lips and it's not meant for longevity i do think that the formulation itself with the plumping aside is a nice cushiony creamy balmy type of formulation so i think that that aspect of it is nice with the plumping in it i think that it is effective i don't know if it'll give you long lasting plumpness but as you're wearing it I think you will see along with how glossy it is the actual plumping technology of them. <laughs> I want to say that number five brown of applause was my favorite. I do like the doe foot. I like the shape of it. I think it gives you a little bit more control. I like the taper on it because I almost feel like I can kind of just like line the outside of my lips with it without worrying about it getting too too messy because it does taper there and I like that it holds a lot of product on it and you can use both sides interchangeably so you don't necessarily have to like dip back in if you want more product. $13 is so close to high-end like it's maybe ten dollars less than a good high-end one i feel like it's so expensive now but i think in general lip products are just getting and makeup products in general are just getting really expensive all right guys that was everything for this video i hope that you enjoyed it my lips definitely suffered through this so please if you did enjoy it please give it a like please comment down below help me out so i know that this video was worth it i hope you guys enjoyed it please make sure to like comment and subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!